Welcome to the first episode in the FMIG Leader Series. My name is Jacqueline Nguyen and I am the FMIG Network National Coordinator. FMIG stands for Family Medicine Interest Group. In this episode called The Basics, our five FMIG Regional Coordinators will be providing you with a quick overview an array of essential topics and resources available to you to get connected to our FMIG network. They will be covering the basics any FMIG leader should know to run an effective FMIG program at your institution. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our Region 1 coordinator, Kelsey Murray. Thanks, Jacqueline. Hi everyone, I'm Kelsey Murray, the FMIG Network Coordinator for Region 1, which covers the Western U United States. I'm a rising third year at The Ohio State University College of Medicine. Today, I'm going to talk about the FMIG basic of connecting with your state chapter. The AAFP has a state chapter for each of the 50 states, the District of Columbia, Uniform Services, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. These chapters make it convenient for members to access relevant information and focused resources right where they live and work. As a reminder, student membership in the AAFP is free for students at accredited medical schools, and once you are a national member, you automatically belong to your state chapter. You can search for more information on your state chapter AAFP website. Chapters have benefits including networking, education, mentoring, and leadership opportunities. They also help advance the specialty of family medicine by advocating to local and state legislators. As students, state chapters can also give scholarships to students to attend national conference or other family medicine events, host regional, state, or multi-state resources in lo your local area, and mentorship, and allow for student leadership at state level on chapter committees. You can even be elected as a state congress delegate in Congress, the organization's policy-making body. Two members are selected as student delegates and two members as alternate delegates for the national conference. But you can participate in resolution writing and national level on behalf of medical students in your state. As an FMIG leader, state chapters can also be a great resource to connect with physicians to host them for FMIG events and connect with family medicine residency to partner them to host workshops for members. Personally, I'm involved in state chapter and I've gone to state chapter events, serve on committees, and have gotten connected to other students, residents, and physicians. My state also holds a reception at national conference and sp sponsors scholarships for student summer preceptorships. In conclusion, connecting to state is a great way to find out about local events, connect to other students, residents, and physicians, and get involved in leadership and advocacy. Your regional coordinators can help connect you with your state chapters. That's it for state chapters, and I'm going to pass it off to Crystal from Region 2. Thanks, Kelsey. I'm Crystal Foster, a fourth year medical student at University of Missouri, and I'm the Region 2 coordinator, or for the Midwest, um, the FA Network Regional Coordinator. I'm here to talk to you about connecting with your regions and the AAFP, or American Academy of Family Physicians. The first way to connect with the FMIG network is to sign up on your region's listserv. The FMIG network regional coordinators use the listserv to send out monthly updates with important information from the AAFP, including deadlines, funding and scholarship opportunities, and upcoming conferences. Student FMIG leaders can also use the listserv to communicate with their region. But don't use the listserv if you only want to email your regional coordinator because you'll end up emailing all the ethnic leaders in your region. You can use it, though, to post information about great programs your ethnic has done, invite other ethnics to your, in your region to regional events put on by your ethnic, or to facilitate discussion about ethnics, family medicine, or the AAFP. To sign up on your region's listserv, visit aafp.org slash ethmig and select the Communicating with Students from the sidebar under the larger headings of Family Medicine Interest Groups and Lead an FMIG. You can scroll down on this page to find the AFP FMIG listserv portion of the webpage and select the hyperlink Regional Listservs. But to know which listserv to sign up with for, you have to know which region you're in. Um, if you aren't sure which region your FMIG is in, check the regional link on the same paragraph of that page the U.S. is divided into five FMIG network regions, and you can find your state to know which region. You can also find the contact information of your regional coordinator on this page and can contact them if you have questions about signing up. 
Once you know your region and have entered your email, name, and school name into the listserv sign up, you will be approved by AFP to join and receive an email stating you've been added to the listserv and can start receiving the monthly updates and sending out updates to any FMIGs in your region. You can also connect with other students and FMIGs on the FMIG Network Facebook page and communicate with students interested in family medicine on this page. Anyone, not just student leaders, can like the FMIG Network Facebook page. You can also like the AAFP and AAFP National Conference for Family Medicine Residents and Students Facebook pages for updates. You can also follow the FMIG Network on Twitter with the handle at AAFP underscore FMIG or your regional coordinators whose handles can be found on the AAFP FMIG Network Regions webpage that I talked about above. So next we'll hear from the Region 3 coordinator. Take it away, Tricia. Thanks, Crystal. Hi, everyone. My name is Tricia Minton. I'm a third year student at the University of Cincinnati. And I'm going to talk about funding, particularly the AAFP funding initiative. So all of us need funding to get our uh, work done as an FMIG. So most um, groups do get the AAFP funding initiative. If you apply, you will get the funding. Uh, you can also consider state funding, regional funding, funding from your school, and funding from your family medicine department. So the AAFP funding initiative is a $600 grant given to your school to use as you please. The application period is from August to December, so keep your eye out on the website, uh, the AAFP website, for the application opening in early August. Um, when you apply, you also need to fill out an activity survey, which is for us to collect some really basic information on your group, some contact information, some ideas that you guys have for events this year, and uh, different things you've been doing in the past year, so we can uh, keep in touch with you and help you out as you need. You also need to do either a presentation or a community service event. So the presentation can be anything as simple as, what is family medicine, or what's a primary care medical home? And again, you can check out the website for some PowerPoints that are already put together for you. Or if you don't want to do a presentation, you can do a community service event. One that's set up already is Tar Wars, which is a smoking prevention program for elementary school students. And another one is called Aim High, which is for exercise and lifestyle uh, modifications. Um, so those are some activities that you can go ahead and use. If you do that presentation or the community service event um, to get the funding, you also have to get evaluation forms filled out by the participants of that event and mail those in to us um, and submit an online form giving us a little bit of a detail about your event. And then lastly, at the end of the school year, due at the end of May, is a community service survey that we ask you to do about different things that you've done during the year. So it sounds pretty complicated, but there's a step-by-step -step outline on the website, and it's definitely worth it, definitely worth the funding. And if you put the effort in, you'll get the money from the AFP and the AFP Foundation. So we really hope that you do that. Um, and that's all I've got, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Megan in Region 4. Thanks, Tricia. Um, I wanted to introduce you guys to the website. Um, if you if you Google AAFP FMIG, it'll bring you to a page that has all the all the great resources for starting an FMIG or taking over as a new leader. Uh, there's links on this page for how to start an FMIG at your school, or and also for setting up leadership structure and developing goals and mission statements. There's also a link for funding, both the, both the funding available from the AAFP as well as from your state chapter and other funding resources. There is a link for programming ideas as well as some of the pre-set up programs that are available for things like lunch talks, clinical skills labs, social programs and community service. There is a link for how to communicate with other students at schools near you as well as other groups around um, around your medical school like SNMA and AMSA. Um, and then there's also a link for various brochures and handouts that you can use to both promote your FMIG as well as promote family medicine to your fellow students. And um, finally, you can get information about meetings and uh, family medicine from the AFP and some other family medicine organizations. Um, that's the resources that are, are on the AFP website for uh, FMIGs, but there's also a lot of great resources just for 
medical students in general, such as um, just learning about family medicine, like the patient-centered medical home and um, things like that. So um, that's a brief introduction to the website. There's a lot of great resources on there. But with that, I'll just uh, turn things over to Casey. Thanks, Megan. Um, my name is Casey Larson. I am a third year medical student at uh, UAB. And I'm also um, the Region 5 coordinator. Uh, Region 5 covers the Southeast. Uh, to, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Student Membership Ambassador Program, formerly known as the Student Membership Coordinator. Um, this program is a great program in place. Uh, designed to help grow student interest in family medicine and in the AAFP. Um, it helps, you can get some great incentives for your FMIG and for the student membership, membership ambassador, whoever that is. Um, for every, for the first 25 students, new students that you get to sign up for the program, you get, um, uh, your FMIG is going to get a check for $25 and the student membership ambassador will also get a gift card for $25. Uh, it increases to 50 when you get 50 membership, uh, 50 new memberships, 75, etc. Um, and every time your FMIG hits a new member incentive, then the student membership coordinator gets a $25 gift card. Uh, it's great. Um, it helps supplement some of the funding to help your FMIG uh, program events throughout the year, um, and it's really easy to do uh, to qualify to be a um, to qualify to be the student membership ambassador, you need to make sure that you're a student member of the AAFP. Um, you want to fill out the student membership ambassador form. Uh, it's on the website uh, under the student membership ambassador program. It has a link up at the top. You just click that and you'll fill out the form. And when you get it filled out, you send it to um, students at aafp.org and um, wait for a reply. Once you get a reply from us saying, um, congratulations, you're the new student membership ambassador for your FMIG. Um, then you get, you start signing students up and you start getting incentives for your program and for yourself. So it's a great program. Uh, we encourage people to do it. Uh, it helps get students connected and it helps your FMIG uh, stay connected also. Uh, with that said, I'm going to hand it back over to Jackie. Thank you, Casey. And thank you to all of our regional coordinators for a very informative session on these wonderful resources available to the FMIG leader. I hope you found this beneficial as well and will be using this information to get connected to the FMIG network. Stay tuned for our other episodes in the FMIG leader series. We will be covering a number of topics in depth, such as ideas for FMIG programming, how to keep those MS4s involved, the Program of Excellence Award and Application Process, Primary Care Week, the National Conference for Residents and Medical Students, and Opportunities for Leadership in the AAFP. These are an example of the opportunities available. Keep an eye out for on our website, our Facebook page, and our Twitter for more details. Thank you.